so staying true to our roots of being a community show, um, whilst we've been very, very fortunate over the last few months to have some some star guests from, from county and international cricket, um, we wanted to, to keep ourselves on a level footing and we thought we'd get the uh, Camera Foundation chairman, Mr Tom Clark, to come and give us a few words about the challenges that he's faced uh, in terms of getting Lee Cricket underway. Tom, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. So, yeah, like I said, you know, it's uh, it's been a long time coming, isn't it, at the start of this season. We've been looking forward to it desperately um, and hoping that everything uh, is, goes to plan. Um, how's things been from your point of view? It's been it's been quite busy, to, to be honest with you. Um, but it's been, you know, it's been very re- rewarding as well. You know, I only took over as chair, um, well, I, I took over chair about two months before we... Ha- we knew the word coronavirus. Um, so uh, I took over from um, Andrew Kennedy, who was the chair before, who'd done a fantastic job. And he has unfortunately had to move away um, because of because of work, although we're very happy to have him um, still on the committee with us. So uh, going into 2020, we didn't really know what was going to be happening. Um, and, you know, we thought, oh, we've got the fixture sorted out. Everything's great. Everyone knows how to, how to run a league, blah, 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 blah. But actually, it's been incredible how much stuff that we've had to do uh, and last year we were really lucky um, how positive everybody was around things um, you know we lockdowns really affected a lot of people I think and and cricket and sport in general actually was was something that people were continuing to to look forward to, to doing so we were very happy to, to put on a league season of sorts last year we had to play half a season uh, and to to give everything every something back to people that they could actually look forward to and enjoy and and participate in so so that that was great um and and last year was 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 a was a really nice uh, nine week season that we had so looking forward to this year it's, it's been great to actually be able to have proper league cricket back on you know we've got a full season in play at the moment the ECB have been working very hard behind the scenes to try and be positive and to try and make sure that we can have as full a season as possible um, and we've been very well supported by Essex uh, Cricket in the community as well, who have been fantastic. We're very lucky to have them as our county board as well. So it, it's been r- busy. It's been trying. We've, as with everybody, we, we've been having to adapt to all the new regulations uh, and the advice in the best way possible and, and communicating with our clubs. But um, the clubs have been fantastic. You know, they're all run by volunteers, much as you know, we're all volunteers here doing this. And um, I think everyone's in a good place, to be honest with you. There's been a whole mountain of things with COVID, but from your point of view, what have been the biggest hurdles uh, since taking over? Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's the unknown, to be honest with you. We, you never know exactly what's around the corner. We don't know as a community, uh, you know, as a, as a society, what's around the corner, whether we're going to go back into another lockdown or whatever it is. So we have to be careful about what we can actually organise and and what we can't do, because we know we might have to adapt. For example, we haven't had teas for the last two years. You know, that's the most important thing about cricket, in my opinion. You know, what are we going to be eating halfway through it? Um, and people have had to adapt to that. You know, the people have had to start bringing their own teas. You know, we've been having to sit outside in, well, the last couple of weeks, some horrendous weather. Um, but people have been getting on with it. And and that's the good thing. People haven't been moaning too much. You, you know, you get the odd moan here and there. Of course you do. But um, it, it, it's things like that. And... And adapting almost completely how the game's been played, having no changing rooms, uh, having no teas, sometimes not even being able to have a pint afterwards, which is also a disaster. So um, it's it's those bits and pieces, but people have been very happy to get out there. People just want to get out of the house, see their mates uh, and just enjoy the game of cricket, I think. It's incredibly refreshing that the, the league chairman uh, understands the reason why everyone plays the game, to get out of the house have some tea and have a couple of beers after the game. Well, if you've ever if you've ever met me before, that's all I actually ever do, you know. And I, I'm not just league chairman; I'm also I'm also chairman of Haraldwood Cricket Club, which I've been part of since I was uh, since '96, and it's my 25th year there. So I think since I yeah, so about 14, 13, 14 years old, I've I've been there. So you know, I've been through every eleven. Uh, I, I'm lucky enough to to captain the, our first eleven in the Premier Division, but I've also you know, I'm now captioning our third 11 and, and loving that as well because there's less people trying to kill me, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, I, I, we, we hope that we've got, a, you know, 
the league committee is, is, is um, there's a lot of volunteers, but there's people who have played cricket at all different levels. And we hope that we know kind of what the, what the, what the rest of the clubs want. Uh, and if, if we don't, we always ask for their opinions and, and how we can improve it as well. You got a new uh, sponsor this year, the Hamrow Foundation. Uh, a quick word about them? Yeah, I mean, um, I think before I talk about Hamrow Foundation, I want to actually talk about Shepherd Neem, who are, who are long term sponsors um, for many, many, well, actually for a few decades, actually. Obviously, they are in, they have had a huge challenge. You know, they run pubs, they, you know, they say alcohol, and, you know, their businesses has, has completely. They struggled and I think they're doing very well to keep afloat, which they are doing. And we wish them the very, very best because they supported us for so long. And we hope that in the future, they'll be able to actually support us again um, in some 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 form. Um, so, uh, you know, firstly, thanks to them for their such a long support. But um, Hamro Foundation have come in. Not a lot of people will know many things about them. Uh, they're run by uh, someone who's the chairman of, of, of a club in, a, in, our, in our league as well. And it's been amazing that during a, during a pandemic, we lost our main sponsor, but actually we've been able to gain a, a new supporter who has, has secured the league's future. Not that we, that we were in an awful position anyway, but it just gives us the breathing room that we needed to be able to... Um, to just continue and to be able to just relax and just concentrate on organising the cricket. So thanks to Q Khan from Buckhurst Hill for all his support. Um, uh, he does a great job and I know he supports, he supports lots of other things. Uh, the foundation support lots of different cricketing things, not just our league as well. So uh, if you don't know much about them, the best thing I'd say is go to their website because it's a really good website and it says a lot about them. So check out, yeah, the check out the Hamro Foundation website. So, uh, so, Looking forward, Tom, do you think what we've learned through the pandemic will create a new framework for the league um, in the future? It's definitely um, it's definitely helped us answer a few questions, which because there's always been a few things going on, which we thought, oh, would that be a good thing to do or not a good thing to do? And actually, this has been a good opportunity to try some of those things out. Um, tease, as I've already mentioned, we don't know how that's going to look in the future. Will that continue to happen? I know that there's some clubs who, especially if you're playing on like an outground somewhere where actually they found that people bringing their own refreshments has actually been a much easier game to then organise. Um, you know, tea, uh, you know, the traditional tea lady, you know, which now is, you know, obviously the wrong thing you can say. You can't say that at all. But, you know, that the clubs clubs are not it run that way now. Um, and some clubs have had, been having to get outside caterers in at huge costs to actually cover this. Um, unfortunately, there's loads more things that people actually do with their lives now. Um, you know, so actually getting volunteered to come and, uh, and, and, and provide refreshments almost like free of charge. It, it, no, it's really hard for clubs to sort out. So that's certainly something that we're looking at for the future. We don't know what we're, um, what we're going to go down. We obviously need to talk to, the, to clubs about what they want. That's the most important thing. So, that, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing that we've been able to do over the last couple of years is um, kind of change the makeup of our league slightly. So we used to be quite a closed shop of 40 member clubs. Uh, and we're very lucky we you know at the top top level we're playing pretty much one of the highest levels of club cricket uh, that you can do but it was a it was a shut shop you know that it meant that clubs from outside our league can can access that top area so we've been able to get um, a new membership um, structure in place with the league so that there's now associate members so we've got six new associate members which are now playing in the league and that means that their first 11s are have access to our first 11 divisions um, and they have now the opportunity to work through our pyramid to actually reach the top of that game as, as well and I th the last few years we've found that something that we think is really really important not only for our league to strengthen our league so we have all the best uh, players um, and clubs there but also it's just better for I think cricket across the county um, there's lots of clubs which we know have lost players in the past because they couldn't access that top level which they wanted to and it's meant that they've had to move clubs and we think that's that's morally wrong really you know we want clubs to stick together and to um to be able if they've got this great team then let them move forward as, as one don't let them splinter off so that's something else which has been really good um and we're hoping to you know to continue with as well so 
I think the, the main thing is we don't really know the, what will be the outcome after the pandemic, which hopefully that's that's on the horizon now that you know we might have a more a more a, a more usual season next year. But we we think that there will be things that come out of this. Uh, but some of those things I don't think we're going to know yet. No, well, I think the future looks uh, really rosy uh, from from our point of view and probably from what you're seeing as well. The success of things like the All Stars, Dynamos. Uh, the uptake in girls' cricket is, is incredible. And I think uh, it, in the not-too-distant future, there's going to be a big explosion of, uh, of interest. And um, I think, you know, cricket is going to be, you know, you're going to have a job in your hands trying to sort of uh, cope with the demand, I think. Yeah, that, I think you're absolutely right, especially where, um, kind of where we are as, a, as the Essex League as well. Very close to, obviously... To, to East London as well, where there's a huge uh, amount of participation taking part there. It's brilliant to see, but actually it's almost too much for what is actually available to be played on. There's not enough venues. There's not enough good quality grass wickets. Uh, there's not even enough uh, good quality um, artificial wickets either. Um, I mean, it's brilliant to see. It's brilliant to see, but we need to get more infrastructure in place as well. We've um, the county have have helped, you know, um, set up a new Essex Women's League as well, which is was again was due to start last year. Obviously, it wasn't the best year to start anything, but they managed to get half a season in, and then that's really taken off for the first year proper this year as well. And we're kind of helping out where we can with that as well. Um, before that, before if you wanted to play good standard women's cricket, you were in a southern league, and that meant that you used to have to travel all over the place, right down to the south coast and right up into Norfolk as well. So it was it wasn't particularly a friend, it wasn't a very friendly league to be part of because you always knew you had a big big travel on your hands. So that Essex league's obviously centralised a little bit to where we are, and we're really hopeful that that, that this is proper season one now but in five ten years we're going to see a lot more clubs in there and a lot more participation from women as, as you mentioned um and and the all-stars and dynamos which are so i'm an all-stars activator and i've also got my first dynamos coaching session this evening as well so um you know it's brilliant having a, a proper centralized hub so that people can just type in a postcode and find uh, a session right for them and their and their family uh, it's been brilliant it's been really well run I feel uh, by the ECB um, some of the kit you get especially for the all-stars is awesome my five-year-old son uh, absolutely loves it and enjoys wearing the shirt with his name on it as well so um, long may that continue and I hope we get more and more help from ECB centrally on that in the future. Well the future looks brilliant um, and uh, we've got to say you know many thanks to yourself and your committee and the army of people behind that organise the league it can't be easy um, with all that's gone on. And I think even in normal times, the workload is still there um, and we could start to go on about overseas players and other kinds of things that uh, are sort of more the day-to-day -day issue stuff. But um, we do uh, we do thank you for all that you and your committee do. So uh, it is much appreciated. That's, that's no problem at all. And as I say, I, we have a very hard-working committee. They're all volunteers, um, but they just love the game. They want to help it. They want to run it in the right way. Um, we realise that there's an awful lot of admin for clubs as well. You know, the volunteers structure in every club um, is put under more and more strain by by things that we have to do. We have to do the do things in the right way, whether it's club mark or safe hands as it is this year, which I'm sure a lot of people listening will will know about and be uh, struggling with a little bit at the moment. But it's the all... The point is to try and get the game in being played in the right way, the safest way and the safest environment for everybody as well. But it does mean a lot of pressure on volunteers. So I think every every club has one or two volunteers where they have to do an awful lot more than everybody else. Yeah. And I think just making sure that everybody uh, buys them a pint on a Saturday just to say thanks for, for each week and no, don't moan at them too much when they muck something up. Probably worth actually pointing out that... Um, if, if people are struggling, if clubs are struggling, there's quite a good uh, support network in terms of grants and just help. Uh, and I think uh, Essex Cricket and the community is a good place to go and talk if you are struggling, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the guys at Essex, I think we're very lucky uh, as a county to have such a positive and proactive county with some really good guys on there. Um, 
the the loans and stuff that people not just the loans of grants people got last year from the ecb and sport england have actually had a huge effect um which again we're probably not going to see the full picture of until maybe the future but um we were we were very concerned about some some clubs in particular about whether they were actually going to be able to survive last year every club that is in our league and i think in the county pretty much has survived whether that's through the grant from Sport England or their local authority. Um, and even last year at my club, Howard, we were able to get an ECB grant to do some work on the pitches as well, which had always been something that we'd wanted to do and not quite had the opportunity to do in the, uh, in, 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 in the past. So um, actually, we, seem, we feel like we're almost in a better position because of the pandemic than we were before, it, which is strange, but that, but that's all because of the support that we've had from from ECB and Sport England. And if anybody's out there, you know, who wants to um, go, oh, maybe we could get more than we than we have at the moment. Then there's a few guys at the county, you know, who um, who are very, very good, who will point you in the right direction, make sure that you are aware of every opportunity that your club can get. And um, I would reach out to them as soon as you can. I'm actually in the process of actually doing a another grant application this morning uh because i've got a nudge from uh, from one of the guys at the county that we hadn't done it yet so um yeah there's, there's lots of opportunities out there probably looking forward to it a bit but any plans for uh, an essex hundred um uh, i think that's not at the moment <laughs> i don't know if anyone's quite sure about i mean i know that dynamos in particular they're really pushing the hundred and um that kind of style of cricket um we're always we try and be led by our clubs. So um, I know that the that clubs do want to see maybe a few, a, few, a, bit, a few shorter games still available, whether that's 2020 or whatever it is. Um, and I think the county are looking at, at that as well about about what's available. At the moment, I think the jury's out on the hundred. Uh, I know there's a lot of skepticism about it. Um, I'm quite looking forward to it. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'll watch any, any, any cricket at all, to be honest with you. So whether it's 120 balls, 100 or five days, I prefer the five day stuff, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, we'll have a look. And, and, and if that is something that, that suddenly kicks off in popularity, then um, I think we'll certainly look at it. We, we, we all love test match cricket, but I suspect the likelihood of having a, an Essex League 100 is, is probably stronger than having an Essex League test match. Indeed. I mean, having played in some of the uh, Premier League uh, all day games. Yeah. One day's more than enough for, for me and for most guys, I think. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope that the 100 does work and it's it brings in more people and more, more popularity, to be honest with you, because I think that's going to be a good thing. Um, and it's also, you know, short, shorter games. I don't think there's anything that wrong with that. If you, you can means you can really fit them in in those evenings and things like that. So, um, yeah, we'll wait and see. Watch this space, I think. Okay, Tom, uh, brilliant to talk and, um, and really enlightening stuff about uh, what's going on uh, as far as the league's going and in cricket across the county. So uh, we thank you for your time and uh, here's looking forward to uh, a successful season for everyone taking part. Absolutely. Thanks ever so much for your time today, guys. Hope that was helpful. And um, yeah, let's, let's hope we have a really good summer and we uh, actually even see the sun in the future as well. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? I forgot what that looks like. <laughs> Tom Clark from the Hamro Foundation Essex League. Many thanks. Uh -huh.